sit on your seatbelt so you can move faster or whatever the crazy things that people come up with and there's a million of them, sooner or later, it's going to come back to bite you in the ass. And you're going to be one of those folks that we walk out of the building who's staring like a deer in the headlights, you know, saying, what am I supposed to do now? And uh, that's not a position you want to be in. The facts, dates, and events presented in this video are from the members' best recollection and may not be fully accurate. This video is intended for entertainment purposes only. Always consult with your local union about your rights and duties at your workplace. The opinions shared on this video are our own and do not necessarily represent my employer's position, strategies, or opinions. All views shared are protected under the National Labor Relations Act. What is going on, everybody? So today, I have Greg Kerwood out of Local 25 in Boston, a Norm, business agent out of Local 623 in Philadelphia. And we're going to be covering something that's kind of like you know, big interest, surface level, but I think a lot of members that have been here for a while have seen it firsthand. It is stop giving away your job. And before you click off, we're going to have, I know this is surface level stuff, but for all you veterans and people being here for a long time, we got an expert level question. I'm going to throw to Greg that one of you asked in the comments section on the last video. So now let's get into it. Now, when I say stop giving away your job, Norm, what am I referring to by that? There are things that we do as drivers and as employees that we think that are helping a company, but it, essentially we're hurting ourselves. I'll give you an example. Um, I'm going to scan these errors away from the stop so that they're not late. But you think you're helping a company, but once the company gets wind of it, you're going to be the first one to go. They're going to say that you're falsifying records. Now, when he says that story, Greg, um, you've been here for a long time, just like me. I mean... Did management ever teach these members to do these, cut these corners um, at all that could actually cost them their job later down the road? Absolutely. That's standard training at this point is to, to get the members. The only thing that, that the, the trainers are concerned with is your numbers, your score, your, your paid day. Um, they will teach drivers uh, and probably preloaders too uh, completely the wrong way to do things, right? Just throw the packages in the truck or, uh, you know, dump everything in the lobby of the apartment building, or, uh, you know, hit, hit CIR and, and make up a name, or put in doc. Um, you know, there's, there's a million and one ways uh, that, that they teach people to fudge things. Um, I would also add that, you know, it's not just sometimes people think they're doing the company a favor, uh, but it's a lot of times people think that they're helping themselves out. Uh, they're tailoring the job to fit their needs. I like to take my lunch at the end of the day because it's easier for me. Or, uh, you know, I like to toss everything here, or leave it on the dock and, uh, you know, I'm in good with the guy or call all my customers to see if they have any pickups and then complete the pickups somewhere else. <laughs> There's one way to do this job. There's 340 methods. You follow those methods. You're going to be fine for the course of your career. But if you try to take shortcuts or think that you're going to do it your way, uh, reinvent the wheel, uh, you know, sit on your seatbelt so you can move faster or whatever the crazy things that people come up with. And there's a million of them. Sooner or later, it's going to come back to bite you in the ass. And you're going to be one of those folks that we walk out of the building who's staring like a deer in the headlights, you know, saying, what am I supposed to do now? And uh, that's not a position you want to be. In. Yeah, I remember a long time ago uh, when, we, you know, management was training us. They used to tell us, uh, you know, when you scanned air, you, you need to lock it in. If it's 1029 and you're going to have late air, just scan it and lock it in. And then as soon as they got the company started implementing GPS into all their trucks, we had like three or four people get fired because they locked it in. You know, just just do the job, honestly. Like if you're going to do something that's going to later down the road uh, screw over the customer, just don't do that. You know, you may be thinking you're doing a favor for your boss. But if you're screwing over that customer and he calls a 1-800 number, your boss has to report to somebody else. So, you know, Norm, when you're, you've dealt with a lot of cases, you know, and how many of these cases percentage wise, would you say, is somebody uh, cutting a corner because they think they're doing the boss a favor? I would say almost 60 to 70 percent, not just drivers, but the inside employees as well. The preloaders, the twilights, the midnight people. As Greg said, for drivers, there's over 340 methods. There's the methods for the inside workers. Do it the right way. I can't, ex I can't stress this enough. Follow their methods. Do what they say to do. We don't worry about poll times. We don't worry about next day airs. If you get out of the building at 930 and you have airs that are due at 1030, you got to drive 30 miles. Whose problem is that? Are you going to speed and put yourself in trouble? 
or you're just going to say, hey, I'm going to have late errors and let the company eat it. I don't say this because I want UPS to fail, but I want us to succeed. The company has to put us in a position to succeed, and we can't put our jobs and our lives on the line for that. So, Greg, in all your years of being here, like, what do you think is the most common thing that you see as far as people? Is it like signing for a package when the customer's not there? Like, what what are the most common things that you see since you've worked here? I would say uh, signing for packages, but definitely with the CIR feature now for commercial stuff. Uh, I can't tell you how many stops I go to where, you know, the list of names in the board is doc, guy, person, um, you know, people leaving stuff. Oh, it's, uh, you know, Joe. I know Joe and I just leave it on the dock and he knows that it's here and comes and gets it later. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Joe may be out sick that day. And, uh, you know, if you're the, the, you know, you don't know that and something gets goes missing and you put down that Joe took those packages, you've got an issue. Um, so I would say that's probably the most common, but I, you know, there's a million of them. There's always some, some new way that people come up with that they think they're going to game the system. Um, unfortunately, they usually share that <laughs> as advice with other people. Um, and it makes for a, a, a messy situation. So, you know, just do what you're supposed to do. Follow the methods. If you don't know the methods, you know, I will personally send you a copy, um, read them, know them, follow them supervisors don't know them managers don't know them it gives you an incredible advantage when it comes to navigating ups yeah and if you need the methods you can email me roslhub at yahoo.com i'll forward them your way now norm same question you've been here a long time what are the most common things that you mm -hmm. see drivers do or inside workers do uh that can get themselves terminated as greg said a big thing is sign up a package is a big big thing um when we have cases and management, they have long history. They have bring out records. Okay, all your signatures on your delivery report look the same. They say doc or door or hospital. When it's a package that requires a customer signature, for, if it's a signature required. Um, lunch violations, surprisingly, people are not taking lunches when the company instructs them to. It's, it's beyond unbelievable to get a discipline for not taking your lunch. So these are some of the most common things that I see. Absolutely. And I, I highly suggest if all this is new to you and you don't understand it, like there's a backlog of videos that we have on here just covering like dishonesty and everything else. But the thing is, is that as Greg said and Norm said, just do the job the way you were trained. And if it seems fishy, if management is telling you to do something that seems a little off, say, yeah, I'll do it. I just need to have it in writing. So just to cover your ass and, and in a time like this, when the harassment's peaking up and it seems like they're getting onto everything, you really want to have all your ducks in a row. Unfortunately, I've had some people reach out to me and I know these two have seen it firsthand where there are members losing their jobs right now over really petty, dumb things because they've been doing it their entire career. And unfortunately, just like Norm just said, is that when management ends up firing you, they dig into your records and they see if there's a pattern and they bring that pattern to the panel so they can say, listen, he's not just dishonest this one time. He's been dishonest his entire career. And it makes it hard. Norm, you can, you know, uh, mm -hmm. kind of talk, I'll elaborate on this a little bit, but it makes it hard for a business agent to represent you with all the facts going against you. Now, what, should, uh, what do you have to say about all that? What can I not say about it? As, as you just stated, they bring all the records, all the diet trainings, everything comes up. Even when you think, okay, the company gave me the answers to go through this good diet training. I'm not really going to read it. Those things are put there. I don't want to say as a trap, but it's a safeguard for you. We all have been here long enough to know that management will say one thing and then tell you to do something totally different. Hey, don't scan that because they don't want the sensor to be on a report for missed packages or for late errors. Don't scan it. Just bring it to the office. If your training tells you to put a scan on a package, every package, every day, you put a scan on it. If your training tells you that you need to be in front of an address before you put a scan on it, I don't care if that address closed three hours ago, you go and you sit in front of there and you scan. If management is telling you something different, as you stated, Greg, get it in writing, have them send it to you through the diet. 
If they don't want to send it through the diet, they want to talk on a personal phone, that is not acceptable. Send it through the diet, ask for your printouts. If they don't get your printout, take a picture of your messages. You have to CYA everything. Absolutely. And so for the expert question, the question that was asked, Greg, we made a video a while back. The seven tests of just cause. I'll link it down below. And this is pretty, you know, this is for people that have arbitrators. I mean, we have arbitration in the South, but it takes like a year to get to there. But, you know, up north, you guys have arbitrators, sitting arbitrators. And we're going to have sitting arbitrators very soon as well in the South. So this kind of applies to everybody. So I do suggest if you have not watched that video, please watch it, especially for your stewards, because it, it kind of helps you out. But here's the question. Watch some old videos while waiting on this one. Question. Is the seven rules of just cause part of the NLRA, uh, the National Labor Relations Act, uh, can you apply those rules during a low-level hearing or a panel hearing? Well, to answer the first part, uh, it's not part of the National Labor Relations Act. Uh, the seven tests of just cause uh, are something that was developed by an arbitrator, I believe, in the early 60s, if I remember right. Don't quote me on that. Um, came up with these seven rules that sort of came up every time uh, he dealt with a case, a discipline case. Um, they've been adjusted and refined somewhat. Every arbitrator sort of has their own little twists on them, um, but they're pretty much accepted practice uh, when it comes to discipline. Um, now, as uh, whether you can use them or not at a lower level than arbitration, absolutely. Um, the way these ca cases are dealt with, and what Norm will tell you, um, you know, ar arbitration is sort of the, the finish line for every case. Um, and so what happens at arbitration trickles down to the lower level. Um, if a labor manager knows they, they're going to lose based on a just cause argument at the local level hearing, they're not going to push that case to the panel or to an arbitrator because they know they're not going to win. Um, so you absolutely can make those arguments. I would recommend making those arguments. Um, as, as you said, we have them in the video. Uh, there's a great book by Robert Schwartz uh, that covers just cause. Um, you can get the TDU website and, and uh, some other places. Uh, I recommend that highly. Uh, explains every single thing, where the stuff came from, uh, and how to use it to our advantage. Because more often than not, the company doesn't know those rules and doesn't follow them. Uh, and it's a very useful way for us to deal with discipline cases. All right. So if you've not done so already, follow 63 Lives Matters, Facebook, Instagram, all social medias. And I'm going to link the Teamster Media Hub. Uh, Greg Kerwood runs that. Uh, check that out on Facebook. I'm going to give a shout out. And I'm going to give a shout out to these two awesome fellows. Uh, they, make, they make my life really easy doing these videos. I have a very busy life uh outside of this so doing these videos it makes it easy when you work with people that uh can snap it out and do a great job and also uh I, i've noticed that the uh the videos definitely have been gaining more traction people are sharing it i do appreciate that i'm sorry if i can't reply to everything uh i have these videos uploaded to several different platforms so there's a lot of comments to go through but uh i do appreciate them i do try to read through them and if I don't reply, please, I'm sorry. But uh, anyways, that's all I got. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to edit something. You're, you're just, For whatever reason, when I look at your video, you look like you're a tiny man stuck behind a giant steering wheel. So <laughs> I couldn't unsee it. Do you want <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>